I'm just too excited to share with you guys a little bit of what I have learned with astrocartography, how it has changed my life, and how it can guide you in your life. Um, right now, I think globally, globally, <laughs> I can't talk this morning. Uh, right now, globally, we have a lot of people changing their address. Um, some are, people are just like changing their city or changing states. And well, I only know one or two who are actually, you know, changing their country of residence. But there's just a lot of moving going on. And if you haven't heard of astrocartography, um, that is where you use astrology and a map of the world to figure out where are your, um, I guess you could say planetary lines. And so by planetary lines, I mean, where's your Venus line, your Mercury, your Mars, your Saturn, your Jupiter, your Pluto, your Chiron, where are these lines? Oh, Uranus, Neptune, um, you know, just as you know what these planets represent and what they can bring, you know, through transits, it's the same thing with where they lay based off of the time you were born, the city you were born, and um, of course the day. So if you have your natal chart information that you have the exact time you were born, so if it was 3.33 in the afternoon, you would have that, and then you would have whatever city you're born, and then of course the date. Um, that would tell you everything about where in the world, um, not only where you should be, but what will you, experience when you get there. So I've traveled quite a bit. I've lived in quite a number of different states within the US as well as in other countries and uh, once I was able to learn astrocartography myself, I was able to basically study this and figure out, okay, is this true? If this is saying that I'm on my Chiron line, this is what I'm going to experience. Is this true? And so I was able to map it out. I was shocked. Um, it was a lot of information. I noticed that it was, at times it was just like spot on. And um, it, it actually like gave me a little bit of anxiety because I was just, you know, it was more of that like existential crisis type stuff. Like what if I would have never known this? Um, why is life like this? Why does this, like why would living on your planetary line basically control your life so much like you know it was it was definitely a lot of information and so um, now I've been using it routinely um, with myself uh, friends and even family members and helping them figure out where they should be not only that but charting back the places they have lived and what was that experience like helping them to understand um, the experiences that they were going through um, sometimes crisis sometimes um, you know good information just good fortune and um you know this is this is a very 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 helpful piece of knowledge and so i wanted to share it with you guys and there's lots of other people on youtube who can show you how to do this so of course my video will not be the only one but i wanted just to introduce it into our little community on this channel so you know what to look into and um it, i think it can change your life 100 percent. this information can change your life and this is probably going to be one of the most important videos I think I will ever do just because the way it has changed my life and the way it's changed others in my life when I've helped them with this it's just this is some really really good stuff so enough of that um let's just get into it um you'll notice and I want you guys to cross reference so don't just take my word for it I want you to go and do your research from what other people say what do astrologers say um and you know make your own i would definitely take notes and that's what i do i have like a little spreadsheet um that reminds me of what i can expect when i'm on my saturn line chiron venus neptune jupiter all of those and so when you're getting information from different sources i would just write it down and then of course use what you experienced when you were living on that line and make some annotations so you can use it moving forward in the future because you are probably going to need to go back to this document and use it many 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 times for probably yourself and other people so once um i think astro.com is probably one of the best websites to use for this just because it is free um basically you'll put in your natal chart information you know make your little you don't even have to log in actually you can just put in your information just to see what your rising is and you know your sun sign and your moon sign and then of course it'll give you all of your other planets so once you have that information you can go to the uh i think it's the astro travel little um button and you'll click that and then it's going to bring you to this huge world map and so you should probably have your name up top 
um, because you can do your name and you, with your natal chart information or you could do other people's natal chart information to see where they should be or what they're experiencing when they go to these different places. Um, and yeah, you would just plug it in there and uh, you'll press the go button and then it will generate all of these lines. It's going to look very chaotic at first, but don't worry. <laughs> it's very easy to navigate. And so you can use the plus and minus sign in the bottom right hand corner of the map to help you zoom in. So find whatever country you want to focus on and zoom in. And you can zoom in all the way to even like the tiny little town. Like, you know, it's not just going to show you all of like the states. It's going to show you even like the tiny towns and you'll see it's like a complete map. And so go zoom in into that area that you have lived because I also want you to chart your past so you can gain confidence in this and you will understand from your past experience. I think that's the best way to learn when doing astrology and with tarot. You have to write these things down and then you have to, okay, what did I experience after I pulled these cards? Or what did I experience during that transit of Jupiter in my eighth house? Yeah, go check it out for places you've lived, places that you're living right now and places that you wanna live in the future. And um, you can actually click the exact pinpoint, the exact city, and it's gonna generate in the right hand side a little drop down and it's gonna show you like um, Saturn cross moon or it could be Mars cross Mercury and then it's gonna have a little um, a couple paragraphs explaining what you are experiencing when you're living in this area now I want you to check this box there's a box in the um, upper left hand corner of this little um, the little biography that tells you what everything means when you click the city check the box and um, it's gonna allow you to see not only the main energy um, because you could be like living close to like power lines it could be like a pluto power line a saturn power line but it'll also show you what other lines are being crossed where the energy isn't going to be as overpowering but you want to also look at those energies because it's going to explain everything like it's going to give you the broader picture um so now for some people in some areas you might only have one or two lines you know in that city or you might have like six or seven <laughs> so go through it read them all and um you know get an idea so just speaking vaguely, uh, I have learned that if you're living on a Mars power line, or not, it doesn't even have to be a power line, just a Mars line in general, you're going to be very active. You're going to have a full, I guess you could say, I don't want to say social calendar, but you are always going to have something to do, whether it is work, whether it is study with your education, whether it is hobbies outside of work or things that you have to do at home you're going to be a busy person um you don't have to worry about being lazy here because you're just going to feel this just this inner sense of get up and go you might be feeling um at you know at certain times uh competitive you know mars is a very it rules our drive you know our life force our will so you might be a little competitive um depending on what other lines or planets this is crossing you may kind of step on some people's toes just to climb that ladder i mean you know depending on the different because there's so many different um combinations i mean it could be a mars cross mercury or a mars cross pluto or a mars cross chiron so all of those have different meanings um, or it could just be a mars in like zenith or it could just be your Mars line. So you definitely need to read that. But, you know, Mars, I've noticed for me, it is just a go, go, go. I was just doing a reading for someone and um, trying to figure out where they're going to move their family. For couples, you need to look at both maps. Okay, so you can't just do one person's map and say, oh, you need to go over here and live on your Jupiter line. Um, you have to also put up the natal chart information for the spouse and then look and see, okay, well, if we're living here, how is this going to affect this person? Because when it comes to, you know, relationships, you probably want to make sure it's a harmonious place for both people. Um, in this case, where we were looking for somewhere where, um, you know, that would increase their prosperity, their abundance, and their money. And um, I noticed that for the last, gosh, 40 to 50 years of their life, um, they've been living on their Mars, both of them. So for the husband, it was he was living on his Mars line, and for her, living on her Saturn line. And, you know, Mars and Saturn, you know, Mars first off, it's a lot of work, 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 go, go, go. I think there was some crossing lines that actually can flare up a person's, um, their, their, I don't want to say anger issues, but you know, it can make them a little testy. Um, so not necessarily the most relaxed type of person, kind of always on edge, this 100%. 
have been negatively affecting him and um, you know it's not bad to be in these places you know if you want to live somewhere for a year to three years but usually if you're living there for a long term like for a long stretch of time this is where you can run into problems so for people who are living on these lines long term um, it is it might not be the best place for you to retire for you to um, accumulate wealth and to keep it um, it just you might always feel like you're in the rat race and you're always go 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 but it's like when do you ever get to like reap your rewards and just enjoy um, so for her the wife being on a Saturn line you know Saturn lines are very tough not only that I think she had a she had a Saturn cross Uranus and so you know you just have unexpected things happening Uranus is not a um, malefic planet now Mars and Saturn are known as malefics okay sometimes they can negatively influence you know depending on the transits and things like that sometimes it is good to take on a Saturnian vibe I guess of just let's be very goal oriented let's be very focused sometimes it's good but in the long term I've noticed this and I've heard other astrologers say this as well being on a Saturn line sometimes it's you working your butt off for years and years and years and years and barely seeing the rewards barely seeing the rewards you're giving it your all and then of course with the Uranus there that means this can kind of throw your plans up in the air it can like give you a curveball sometimes the curveball is good because Uranus isn't is neutral and Uranus isn't good or bad so sometimes this could be um, a windfall of money coming in or sometimes it could just be a divorce that sucks you dry of all of your savings <laughs> um you know or back taxes like so to have that it's just like a whole lot of work giving it your all being a very strict and very focused maybe acting like you're older than you really are and not a whole lot of enjoyment of pleasure of okay i worked hard so i can play hard like no there's really not a whole lot of play hard so for some people um this is this would not be the place where you would want to retire this might not be the place that you would want to stay for a long period of time i think for people who are going to college in places like this on your saturn line i think it'd be very good for your focus for you know sticking to what you're doing um so when we go to mars again that's not a, an all around bad place to be um, but if that is the main energy, which her main energy for being in these different cities, because like, you know, I charted all the places that she lived within this one state. Um, for that to be the main energy, um, I would be a little worried about that. It's okay if you'll see it in like, in the bio box, if you see it kind of down lower, you know, just you don't just don't want it like as a main energy for a long period of time that's all so if you're going to go to college somewhere if you want to go study somewhere or maybe you're going somewhere for some training for work um i think that's fine maybe you're trying to get serious about writing a book and you've you get writer block in your city so you want to go somewhere else i think that's fine i see nothing wrong with it but for long term it you know it's difficult and it's funny because she's also a Capricorn rising so you would think being Saturnian ruled that this energy would be kinder and so I, I do feel like she was at home in a way but just when she looked back on her life over the last I think for her 45 46 years it's like what do I really have to show for it and that is why they're looking to relocate and they were just like just tell us where we need to go and we're gonna go and so I looked all throughout the US plotted things out and gave them a rundown um, throughout all the states what they would experience and um, you know what places I generally thought would be good states for them and you know just what they should just do their research into I just had to say get off that line you know and for her main energy to be you know her Saturn line get off that line <laughs> and uh, yeah it was just very interesting I think there were some other Neptunian crosses because you'll notice it's not just going to be one line usually you're at an intersection of many and so it's going to be a mixed pot a mixed bowl however you want to explain it and so you yourself are going to have to choose okay what energy is the most important for whatever my goal is because i have yet to see a perfect place for anyone to go 
you know, like a perfect place where you're not going to have some type of challenging energy, you know, whether it might be, um, you know, some secondary energy of maybe a Pluto Chiron cross or maybe or Venus Neptune. It's not just going to be all the good stuff. You are going to have, you know, some other aspects, but that is life. So don't look at this as this is going to be the perfect place and I'm going to be happy all the time. Like, no, that's not how any of our lives go. And so don't be unrealistic with this. But if you see, your main energy being being on a Mars line or on a Pluto line oh my gosh oh my gosh <laughs> or a or a Venus cross Chiron um, you would not want that as the main energy it's okay to be a secondary to have a little bit of that but after a while these get very heavy so moving on from I mean I thought that was a great example just because I've just I've, I've been working with that um, I've seen some Venus cross Neptune lines and um, I myself have lived on some of these lines and you know it was really beautiful so you have to know that Venus rules everything that has to do with beauty and pleasure and it affects our finances usually in a very beautiful way um, as well as loving relationships. So for Venus, it can be very beautiful. Now, Neptune, you, people forget that Neptune is like the love planet. So, so Venus, we usually think of love, pleasure, and everything, but Neptune is more of just a love of, uh, the type of love you'd have for a child. It's just that unconditional love, the highest form of love, but Neptune also has some sketchy things going on. Sometimes it can be uh, the feeling of wearing rose-colored glasses or it could be of maybe living in denial or having putting someone like on a pedestal um, not seeing things for what they are but being in this dream world even if you are seeing things as better than they are for some people it's kind of helpful in manifesting at times so I do not want to say that oh my gosh don't live if you have a Venus slash you know Neptune cross like you know don't live there like no this could be very beautiful like um, I think the explanation for it was like you being the lead star or the main star in a film where you know you know that you're acting in a movie but you are the star of this movie. I mean this can be a very dreamlike place to be um, and a very loving place but yes rem remember that to be realistic about the people and your thoughts about them that they are not probably going to be as perfect as what you want them to be but um, to me this is not overly a negative you know line now for neptune if it's just like a neptune line which i've yet to have a chart where someone was on just a neptune line usually it is a um maybe like a chiron slash neptune i've never just seen just straight neptune but for neptune you know you could see it as being kind of uh, dreamy or oh i think in a chart that i just read um, he had a mercury slash neptune and so while mercury living on a mercury line can basically mean that you're going to be I mean this is great for I would say journalists this is great for people who are trying to write a book write a play um, this is great for people who are studying maybe you're trying to learn something maybe you're going to college maybe you are um, trying to get a certification in your job like this is great for anything that has to do with your intellect um, increasing your intelligence for communication um, also, it is kind of a, <laughs> I think one astrologer said that she noticed it to be kind of a, um, a hermit type energy. And um, I, at first I didn't understand, but now after seeing all these different charts, basically the hermit energy comes in on that you are going to be so in the zone of research, of pursuits, of deeper meaning deeper learning of maybe even just studying yourself that sometimes you might not come up for air <laughs> so a lot of this is going to be you be being very focused and being very diligent and um so yeah it, it might not be the most sociable aspect i mean you would think with mercury but not to say that you're gonna have bad um communication but you know for some you're gonna be very interested in just learning more in general um, so for that Mercury slash Neptune um, while this is very good for those who are very creative 
Um, for others who have to do work that is around numbers and logic and reasoning, because of that Mercury cross Neptune, you might kind of find yourself fading into the clouds, you know, sometimes. Um, being lost in your own daydreams or maybe a little unfocused and so while it is still very helpful for creative pursuits and of maybe moving at your own pace, if you have very strict deadlines um, for a Mercury Neptune cross, you know, just be understanding that you're gonna need to work or try to be a little more focused than usual because you can kind of drift off. Another line that I saw was Chiron, and I don't think you should ever be afraid of seeing some Chiron lines. Like I said, usually when you're clicking these cities, you're gonna notice you have a mixed bag of energies and of planets and of crossings. So please focus on the main, so whatever comes up first, that main crossing, that's gonna be your main energy. Yes, the secondary energy will affect you. Whether it's three other crossings or just one other crossing, you're gonna, it's gonna affect you. But for Chiron, this is very transformative. It is healing and it is going to wherever Chiron is in your um, natal chart, it will, you know, maybe bring up some of those insecurities, but it's in a way that's going to allow you to heal. Um, I've noticed for myself being on some of my Chiron um, lines, I guess we can call it a Chiron line, that sometimes I would have uh, meet people who were, it was like a faded interaction and a faded encounter, but that changed me in a in such a way like a profound way that like stayed with me for a very long time um another planet that does the same thing is pluto pluto is another one this is this is deep radical change though so so chiron will give you some depth maybe in your relationships maybe a little i want to say a bittersweet type of understanding and of healing your innermost insecurities with pluto there could be some transformation um you could get the energy just gets very very heavy with pluto just you know the change and just the death and the renewal to be in a place where it's a heavy pluto line so maybe this is like your main energy it's fine to be there for short periods of time um but to say to live there for years and years and years unless you are a light worker unless you are a therapist this energy especially on intuitives i think could get very draining very very quickly it is just, it's very heavy um, and you will always feel like the main experience of being in this place is one of understanding your pain, of your shadow work. And I think it's good to have a balance of shadow work along other things, but um, if this is not your main work, if this is not your main job, um, if you're not going somewhere to maybe get some past life experience, you know, maybe you want those experiences to come back to you, those memories, if you're not going there to, for healing or maybe you had an addiction and you want to, you know, go to rehab in one of these lines, you know, I just, I don't think you'd want to be there for a very, very long period of time just because I think the energy could get very heavy for you. And yes, there might be some karmic um encounters or faded encounters and it could go either way it could be but there might be a little bit of pain involved <laughs> emotionally of course um you know if you have a mars line and let's say a mars cross pluto i don't think i have to explain how that could negatively impact you <laughs> i mean me personally i would stay away from that line so let's look into the benefic planets the exciting lines okay so a venus line that is an amazing line i've seen these lines where it's just venus by itself um this is going to be this it's a place where you make money so easily it's like opportunities you just like fall into them this could be you living in one of the nicer neighborhoods in this city or getting a job and then all of a sudden you're getting promoted to where you know you're making the money to where you can afford to live there so you might not be there as soon as you get there but you will definitely rise through the ranks of whatever work you're doing um, pretty quickly it's just i mean it's good news for your love and oh my gosh uh some of these lines especially like a sun and moon crossing if you're on your sun or moon line um you will be very attractive to the opposite sex you're gonna have a lot of people offering like giving love offerings to you like you know just you would meet people like at the at the bus stop like at the train station um 
that I've lived on some of these lines in other countries and yes it was just everywhere I went as soon as I touched down in that country I was just meeting people left and right so being on a Venus line it is much the same as if you were to be on a moon slash sun line or sun slash moon sign uh, line um this is also really good if you want to start a family um <laughs> yeah it's great for procreating um sometimes you have to be careful if it's a venus cross uranus line um for some people this could be you looking in you know you're enjoying all the attention you're getting and the love experiences and so if you're in a committed relationship this could be you maybe wanting an open relationship or you continuing to indulge and flirt even though you know your partner you know depending on whatever you guys how you have your relationship set up your partner might not be okay with that so on a venus slash your honest your line you want to make sure that if you're in a relationship that you guys are both on the same page about your freedom because you might look at relationships and um i don't want to say in a non-monogamous way but it's going to be you're going to be thinking outside of the box <laughs> let's just put it like that um, venus can be very good for your finances for your working and your pleasure your joy um this is a great place to be. Jupiter lines, oh my gosh, these are the lines of good fortune. Jupiter expands basically anything it touches and so this is just you being in the right place at the right time and just freaking opportunities, like how did that happen type of stuff. Um, it's just, is this real life? Um, I think for a lot of people, especially if you've had a rough last couple years or even a rough life, rough last 10, 20, 30 years, um, a move to a Jupiter line or a Venus line I think could just be such a breath of fresh air how your life will just change and you can just be in a flow state and things will come to you I mean you're gonna be magnetic you do have to be careful in, on a Jupiter line because you can be enjoying yourself so much that you might get a little bit lazy because <laughs> things are just gonna come to you you're definitely not going to be trying and trying and trying as hard as you would at on a Saturn line or busting your butt trying to um, compete with everyone everyone's out to get you or, like it's not gonna be like that it's just things are just gonna flow and so um, I have noticed for some people you have to be careful because they might be overindulging in food and things like that so I'm putting on some extra happy weight even if you're not in a relationship <laughs> just because you know you're enjoying the best of what that area has to offer not only that, but you know, whether it's you have friends in high places that allow you to enjoy a, a more relaxing um, type of lifestyle, or it could just be you meeting, you know, your spouse giving you that luxury, um, or maybe you yourself working and all of a sudden, maybe you work from home and you know, you've been doing the same thing you've been doing in another city and then all of a sudden you're here and you know things just pop off like it just goes through the roof and uh, you're very visible like this is an area of everyone kind of like figuring out who you are so if you move to these places and no one knows you don't worry especially if you're on a jupiter or a venus line or a sun line or a sun cross moon line uh, people are going to notice you and you will be um, pretty popular i mean it's a great place so some of these places I've moved by myself where I did not know a single soul. I've known this to be true, that things might be quiet the first couple weeks, but just wait. By the time you get to the second or the third month of being there, you're going to have a whole social calendar just full of different people from different backgrounds and different lifestyles, different tax brackets, and you're going to have your choice of what you want to do. And you know, you're going to have your own little community. So um, for people who are trying to progress, let's say you have a YouTube channel and you want to stand out more, I think being on a sun line would be very beneficial for you, being on a Jupiter line. Um, or if you're someone who maybe you're into politics or you want to run for something, um, you know, there's some cities that are going to be more beneficial for you to be in that are going to help you with your exposure and people liking you more and being um, attracted to you. I'm not talking about, you know, well, sometimes it might be sexual, but just attracted to you in general, like you are a magnet there, um, drawn to you. Uh, what did I miss? We went Pluto, we went Chiron, you know, Ch Chiron, you have to remember it's the wounded warrior, wounded healer, and so it's gonna. You know you're gonna be met face to face with these darker sides of your subconscious your insecurities but like i said after a while it's like how much shadow work can you really do because <laughs> you'll notice that you're just going to be doing shadow work on shadow work on shadow work so you'll be getting over things don't 
get me wrong, especially if you acknowledge them and you work with them. Um, because either way, it's going to be thrown in your face, whether you want to acknowledge your shadow, shadow side or not. But just after a while, you might just want a, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> for, for Pluto, it could just be, whew, it could be heavy. It could be huge change. Um, so I, I would say a, living on a Pluto line would be really nice if you, oh gosh, maybe you just got out of a divorce um, maybe you just got out of a relationship or maybe you had trouble with substances and you need to make a radical change in your life like this needs to be a complete fresh start you need to leave everything from your past behind you this is when i would suggest go to that pluto line like go it is going to radically change you in each and every way you might have some goals in your mind don't be surprised if pluto helps you to put you more on your life path um, this might be a path that you didn't even know so it might activate self-discovery within you um, your your angels your guides I mean God will definitely support you in this and turning your life around for the better so this could be the type of energy that is so transformative that it could change your life that is when I would recommend Pluto now would you live there for the rest of your life and die there probably not um, because like I said it's very transformative and so after a while you need to make the trans the transformation that you feel most like yourself once you have it you might look for you know greener pastures um you might not want to continually go through change 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 but um i think it's very beautiful for that now for some people being on a neptune line or having a neptune cross you know be a little careful if you have issues with maybe um, participating in drugs or drinking because it can help you get lost in that dream world in those clouds um and you know it, it could definitely make this these escapist tendencies, you know, stronger. <laughs> um, so definitely if you're looking to go into a rehab or to go on a spiritual re retreat, maybe like a ayahuasca type ceremony, something like that. Um, well, I think ayahuasca might be good. Um, like a ceremony like that, going to one of your Neptune lines would be fine. But um, if you're going to help you get away from substances, you definitely would not want to go there. Um, I think if you're looking for inner healing, go to a Chiron line, go to a Pluto line. Um, if you're trying to get into rehab, those would be very beneficial for you. Even go to a Saturn line. It's going to help you be very serious and make these those profound changes that are going to stick with you for the long term. So keep in mind living on these lines whether it's venus and you meet the love of your life your future husband or your future wife and then you start your family even if you guys move to a different line those gifts that you were given or that gift that you were given from living on a chiron line where you learn so much about yourself and you're able to heal some wounds that's still going to stick with you even if you go live on a uranus line even if you go live on a mars line you're still going to have those gifts and what you learned with you and it's not just going to fall away so you don't have to always stay right there you can move around it's going to be fine like i said every place you go is going to be a mixed bag of energy so you, you're going to notice where you have a very beneficial jupiter lines or venus lines and then you'll also have maybe some saturn cross mars lines or some pluto or some chiron it's okay um you'll you'll see for yourself and you just get to pick which is the most important and what experience you want so I hope this is helpful. Um, I look forward to lo reading your guys' comments. And have you done this? Do you have experience with this? And how did it change your life?